Molly here with Rose City RV of Michigan and today we want to take a look at the 242RD Impression. These are new for our lineup. Um, so is this the correct model for you, you may ask? Here are five key specifications to help you decide. This model can sleep up to four people, has a weight of 7,656 pounds, has an overall length of 30 feet 5 inches and a height of 12 feet 10 inches. It features one slide, so let's take a look inside. So starting with the interior, this is a beautiful coach inside. Um, this is new to our lineup, the impression, and we're really happy with it. Uh, this is a really cost effective unit, but has really incredible features. Um, when we get to the outside, I'll show you a bit more of the construction and what I consider the important um, construction components that will allow these units to last 10, 15 years. Um, as we know, loans go out that long, so we wanna make sure that this product lasts. Um, so there's a lot of cool construction features in this unit or in this lineup, the impression lineup, that most fifth wheels in this segment are not doing. So this unit does compete with Cougar really well. I did go take a look at the Cougars when I was down at the dealer show. Um, and I'll be honest with you, the looks of this unit, the colors and just the choices that they chose, I feel looks better and it's even more competitive on price. Um, so that's really the goal here. This rear dinette floor plan is really unique. Like I mentioned before, this is only 30 feet long. Um, but you are able to, you know, we said sleep four, but you can technically sleep six in here if you wanted to. Um, might get a little tight, but you can definitely sleep two adults there. As you can see, this is full length here. This folds out into a bed as well, the couch. So you can sleep six, um, but it would be a little tight. So we like to say sleep four. Now, starting in the back here, we're going to have total blackout shades here, which we like. Um, those are a good option versus the old string blinds. A lot of people are doing these, but these are definitely nicer. Um, the brown is new for 2025. I personally like the brown a lot, especially with the, the light brown with the darker tones. And then the floor choice, I think they did a good job on. Totally eliminating the carpet in that slide out right here, as you can see. So we like that as well because carpet and RVing just doesn't really go together that well, especially if you have kids or pets. So um, as you can see in the back here, big rear dinette, nice pull out sofa if need be. We have the brown valances to match, which are a nice material as well. We have a 12 volt refrigerator here, which this is the bigger one. And you can switch the hinges. I don't know why you would want to on this one, but it definitely makes sense to open this way. This is a nice big refrigerator. Farmhouse style sink. Monitor panel located right here. Above that, we have our on-demand water heater. Um, it's not on right now, so I can't show you how that functions. And then we have a nice one piece countertop. You don't have the trim around the edge, which a lot of times um, in the budget market, you will see a, a cheaper countertop here. I like this because if you get water in here, it's not gonna separate. Um, we have our matching stove drawer right here, which is a really nice feature. Um, just kind of makes it look more residential. And then traditional microwave, Moving over here, we have our TV. These are really a cool thing. I don't know anybody else in the industry using these. I didn't see any at the show besides Impression. These are cool because they link together. You can pair, I think, up to eight of these. Um, so you can put these outside or inside, one inside, one outside, whatever you're doing. And it'll give you ample sound um, around the coach. If you've RV'd, you know that the speakers that they put for the outside speakers are never good speakers. That's a top complaint we get here. So this is a nice change to that. What most people don't realize is these walls um, are not thick enough to put a decent speaker outside without having um, that outside uh, fitting box. So, and that's not a bad option either, but I like this. This is a cool, this is a cool thing that they're doing here. Now, we've made it back to the, to the back. Obviously, as you see here, this is not a, a huge floor plan. Like I said, only 30 feet. So let's go check out the bathroom and the bedroom setup. So in the bathroom here, another one piece countertop, which we like. And then nice big shower, which is a bonus um, for fifth wheels. You don't always get that, especially in a 30 foot fifth wheel. So nice little uh, shower here. And then um, this is a cool, it just kind of looks residential. They spaced it out with some bars here and then put some hooks. You can hang towels or clothes or whatever you might need to do there, which is a nice feature. 
Now in the bedroom, this is actually a fairly large bedroom for a 30 foot fifth wheel. We have this VersaTilt bed in the up position right now. A lot of questions we get about the VersaTilt. Do you have to use it? No, you don't. You can leave it down. However, it's very nice to have that walking space, changing space if you need it. Um, just gives you that more versatile room in the bedroom, which is usually a tight area. And then over here, we have our washer dryer closet or just a regular closet whatever you want to do it's multi-use um they're putting that water set up in these smaller fifth wheels now um, if you want to add washer dryer for extended stay um, you can do that now which we like so let's go check out the outside okay so the outside we're going to start back here we have power stabilizers on this unit so you're going to have power stabilizers here the front landing gear is obviously also going to be power um, which may acts as your other stabilizers in the front there no auto level on this model we're trying to keep that price down to keep it more affordable for people so that's what we have there now one of my favorite things about the impression is the exterior look uh, and you'll be able to see this as we get into the sun but this is a very nice as dell high gloss um, gel coat on the exterior this looks like a high-end hundred thousand dollar unit from the exterior not that it, it isn't a high quality unit because it is but it's very budget friendly um, but i like that they don't get rid of the quality pieces that to me is important this will hold up 10 15 years down the road now obviously if you have water leaks, there's always an issue for DLAM. This will DLAM a whole lot less than anything else than like hung glass, say. Asdell has total composite construction. There is absolutely no wood in this, which is huge for this segment. This is a very budget-friendly unit for this quality of exterior. So that to me is important. 10 years down the road, I want it to still look nice. I don't want it to look like I bought a budget fifth wheel. So 30 inch door, um, not something you normally think about. But it is a nice feature. They did go with the glass door too. I'll be honest, I have mixed feelings about the glass door. It is heavier, so it does make the door latch work nicer in my opinion, as that's one thing we've had an issue with with the new steps over the past few years, just having that, that uh, space on the bottom. So that's the bonus to that, although I don't love the glass because RVs going down the road, glass going down the road, it just seems like a recipe for disaster. So far, so good. Haven't had any shattered. Um, I have seen some, but we have not had any, so that's a plus. So overall, I'm happy with that. Now, moving to the tires. This, these ones have Goodyear's. They are switching to Maxxis um, tires, which do have an 87 mile an hour rating. No, you should not go that fast. Um, but believe it or not, trailer tires and just trailers as a whole, they have speed ratings because they're not designed to drive 90 mile an hour like everybody wants to do. So I like the Goodyear's, the Maxxis, I do like those as well. They've really done a good job um, with those in the last little bit here. So I'm not I'm not sad they're they're moving to that. It's just availability, um, but, but no issue there in my opinion. We have 110 outlet here, and then we have our coax. So if you wanted to put that exterior TV out here, you can. Moving over here, we have our furnace duct. Just remember this being underneath the awning. Um, it is October now. I am in shorts, but it is only 55 degrees. Some people would be running their furnace. Don't put anything in front of this. Um, this has a hot exhaust. It will melt things, catch things on fire, and you don't want to burn up the side of this pretty unit. So make sure you don't do that. Here we have our storage access. So this is gonna be passed through. Now on this 30 foot fifth wheel, you are gonna lose out obviously on some storage because it is a smaller unit, um, but it still has ample storage. It's gonna be more than a travel trailer, which is nice, um, but still a lot of room here. Underneath of here, if you can see this, they also put another speaker bracket here. So if you want to take those speakers, I was telling you that you can link outside, you can store it right there, which is nice. Then a bottle opener, um, which everybody needs while they're camping, solar controller, and our battery disconnect is located on this side. One thing I'll say, I really wish they'd put the battery disconnect on the driver's side. That's just a lot more user friendly. Um, is it that big of a deal? No, but that is something I will be telling them. The driver's side works much better um, for those purposes. Okay, so underneath of our fifth wheel here, we have some storage like a traditional fifth wheel. Um, solar on the side port, that's going to be if you wanted to add an additional panel. There is one up on the roof. I showed you where that controller is. Um, but that's if you wanted to add one to move around. That's a removable or a backpack solar um, that you can move into the sun if need be, if you're camping where there's trees. 
And then we have our extend and retract here on our front jacks. So unhooking and, uh, and hooking is a breeze. Propane located right here, two 20 pounders. Um, some people have complained about going to 20 pounders just because they feel they're not getting enough gas. But honestly, um, after I've been doing this a long time, the 20 pounders are a lot easier for people to maneuver. Those 30 pounders weigh 55 pounds when they're full. These ones only weigh 40. That 15 pounds really makes a difference um, to somebody, let's say a female or an elderly person. Um, and there are a lot of those in the, in the market today. So I like the 20 pounder idea. Plus the only thing that really burns propane a lot excessively would be your furnace. Um, and a lot of people aren't running their furnace excessively. You could switch those or add an additional if you wanted to, um, but I like the 20 pounder option. Now on the other side of our pass-through storage here, we have our um, docking station as we would call it. This is cool, kind of keeps everything in one place. City water connection, fresh water tank fill, which I, we've talked about multiple times on our channel. If you are curious how you fill this up off grid, there is a video for that, which we can show you. Then we've got outside shower here, which is nice. Allows you to rinse things off if need be. Black tank flush located up here. Remember, don't get these confused. I like how impression separates these two. Um, so it's a lot harder to mix those up when they're farther apart. Plus they're labeled nicely. And then we have our winterization inlet located right there, nice and easy. And then all you're gonna do is pretty much flip a valve and everything's right there and easy. We do have a winterization uh, video as well. We did one on a travel trailer if you're interested. Um, check that out too. And then we have our cable hookups here with a light so you can see. And then a manual override on our jacks. In case you have a jack failure, you can always manually override those, which is right here. And they put a nice little clip there um, for easy hanging storage, which I like. Doesn't get lost in the mix. Okay, then we have our 50 amp uh, service located here. This is wired for two air conditioners. If need be, you can do that. And then we have our on-demand water heater. Um, so on the exterior, it kind of looks the same as the others, um, except when you open the door, it looks totally different. Manual, I mean, a uh, uh, main power switch located right here. And then in the inside, you have the control center, which I pointed out earlier, that'll allow you to um, adjust the temperature right from inside so you can get that water to the perfect temperature that you like. Underneath of here, you will see we have our sewer dumps. This is gonna have one dump centrally located here where everything comes together. So one thing, again, um, this being, this market, this impression market is a budget market. One thing I like that they do on this, these are heated and enclosed underbellies. Not only that, they put the valves and that's one thing a lot of manufacturers miss. They have it in heated enclosed underbelly, but they put the valves on the outside. Well, that doesn't do you any good when you go to drain it and your valve is froze and you can't open it. So if the liquid behind it is not froze and the valve is, it doesn't matter. You might as well have the liquid froze because you can't get it out. So these are up underneath. So if you are into cold weather camping, um, early spring, late fall or whatever it is, that is a good feature. Like I said, these have heated tanks and it has forced air with enclosed accessibility. So you can take those panels down, no cutting that material and then having to belly tape it. Us at the dealer, we hate that. This is a much better setup um, where you can take those pieces down, remove them, fix what you need to and put them back up and you can't tell you've been in there. Now, moving to the back side of the coach here, um, there's really not much here, except one thing I wanted to point out, they are still putting a ladder on here. We did a couple videos of the other style ladders. I like the other ones for a lot of reasons. Um, they're safer, they're um, like a cleaner application looking, but it is something you have to store. And this is already here. So if a tree limb falls on your RV while you're camping, you can just jump up there, get it off, and you don't have to get out the ladder or store it anywhere. So I like that they kept that. Another thing I really like, that they're doing is they're putting a true towable hitch on the back of here. Um, a lot of a lot of brands in this segment don't do that, um, and that appeals to a lot of people. You know, you you want to buy a 30 foot fifth wheel because you want to tow your boat, or you want to tow an enclosed trailer with your side by side or your motorcycle. This comes ready to tow with the wiring. They're rating at 3,000 pounds, which is you shouldn't really go any higher than that anyway, even if it was made for that. 
Um, and then you've got length as an issue when you get outside of 3,000 pounds, usually length is a problem. So I really like that. The wiring and everything is there. We do this for a lot of customers. We install these. Um, we have a good welder. But it's $800 to $1,000 to have the material and the wiring and that put on. So this is already there. It's just one less thing you got to pay for if that's something you're interested in. And if it's not something you're interested in, it does make that resale easier because there are a lot of people out there that want to tow with their fifth wheel. So that's going to do it for our impre this impression. Um, this is, like I said, a new lineup. So we'll be bringing you some more videos of impressions, but we're really happy with the product. Um, they do have a couple floor plans out that are unique, which I like. This, like I said before, is kind of a, a copycat. Uh, to the Cougar, the number one selling Cougar fifth wheel floor plan. Um, but to be honest with you, I think this kicks its butt, but that's just my opinion. But if you're in the market, let us know. We do have a couple of these on um, the floor here. They are at our Tawas location, but we can help you wherever you are. So let us know if you need some help. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe for more RV videos like this.